Hey y'all, let's take a look at the distance between two points. First off, um, let's take a look at do an oldie. So pause it and go ahead and find the value for C, something we did in the last lesson. So give it a pause there. Okay, well, remember the old uh, saying, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A can be either four or seven, whatever you want. Let's just call it four. A squared is 16. B squared would be seven squared, 49. That'll be C squared. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this up or switch it here. C squared is 65 then. So C would be the square root of 65, which is about a little more than eight, right? Because the square root of 64 is eight, so a little more than that, which is sensible because this will be a little, this has to be the longest side in the right triangle, the hypotenuse to us. Okay, knowing that, let's take that one step further and we're gonna go find the distance between these two points. Now, let, let's do an easier one. If you had something, let's say it was right here, and then right there, okay, those two points. You could just count across, right? You could just go, oh, that's one, two, three, it's three. Or if you had from here, and you went, oh, down to here. Okay, and what's the distance? You would just go one, two, three, four, done. But if you've got something from here to here, then what's the distance of this hypo like this line here? I mean, how the heck are you gonna find that out? I mean, you can't just go, well, I think this is about three quarter. oh, but this is one eighth or two fifths or three, I mean, there's no way you could possibly know that to add those together. So what we're going to have to do is define this because again, look at this thing from here to here. You think we can figure out how to do that? There's no way. So what we're going to have to do is actually create a right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what the distance is. Now you can make a triangle like this and go kind of, you know, like that, or you can go, you know, like this. It doesn't matter. That is a horrific line, but you know what I mean? Like this. That's supposed to be a right triangle. Anyway, okay, so from here to here, we're going to have to use Pythagorean theorem, make ourselves a right triangle. So we can go, this is one, two, three, four. So that side is four, right? So we can just, that's four. This side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Well, again, that's what we're going to do now is to find this. Since there's no way to measure that, we're going to have to use four squared plus seven squared is gonna be that side squared. Well, if you remember, that's exactly what we just did a minute ago, it's the same thing. So um, that's what we'll do. And that's gonna be the square root of 65, which is a little more, like we said, than eight. And that's how we do it, finding the distance, distance between two points, all right? There's another one. Find the distance between this and that. Now, you know, you can either, you know, have a, use graph paper so it looks perfect, or you can just kind of like, you know, make yourself a simple little graph and it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you're counting these, okay? So let's go three, negative four will be one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. There's one point right there. And then negative five and two, one, two, three, four, five, and then up two, boom, okay? So again, we can make a, you know, a triangle however weight you want, but this is going to be the hypotenuse of the triangle, all right? And I'll just draw it like this. But it wasn't too bad, that was kind of bad. Anyway, it doesn't matter how perfect it is. So let's find the distance of this side. And that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Well, we have six and eight. This might look familiar to you. Question is, what is this? Well, six squared plus eight squared is going to be the hypotenuse squared or C squared, whatever you want to call it. 36. 64, that's gonna be, we'll call it C squared this time. So C squared is equal to 100, and of course the square root of 100 is, happens to be 10. So that works out to an integer answer, which is, there's no way in the world you're gonna be able to measure this and find out exactly what it is by trying to find this individually. However, if you were to actually draw, let's say you were to measure this and you went, oh yeah, this is six units, you could actually, if you wanted to, take a piece of paper or a pencil or an edge of a, whatever you want, like a ruler or something, and measure this from here to here as one unit. And you could actually figure out that this is going to be 10 units. I mean, it works perfectly, so it actually does work. Okay, the slope formula. All right, so we're gonna figure out the slope formula. And all you need to do is, and you can do this yourself. So, uh, you know, let's name two points. I don't, I don't care. What point do you want me to use? Go ahead, name any point. Okay, that's fine. Three and six. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
I'm assuming you said 3, 6. Okay. All right. There's a line. Okay. Well, let's do another point. What other point am I going to use? Okay. 8, 2. That sounds good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then there's 2. Okay. 8 and then 2. All right. Okay. Well, what is the slope of this? You know, let's, let's you know, draw the picture here from there to there. Well, we know it's going to be negative, right, since it's pointing down. Okay, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, that's going to be the top number, right? Doink. Okay, now let's go. Okay, we went 1, 2, 3, 4. In the same spot, we went 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. So we know it's going to be 4 fifths, but it'll be negative since it's pointing down, right? Okay, well, look at these two numbers. Look at these two num Look at these two points. How could we get a 4 based on two of these numbers? And then how can we get a 5 based on the numbers as well? Okay, look and see if you can get a 4 by adding or subtracting two of those numbers. Which one would it be? 6 and 2, right? Okay, so you go 6 minus 2, that's going to be 4. So 6 minus 2 is 4, okay? Now, to the 5, you look at the other one, right? You go 3... Since we did 6 minus 2, let's do this one first. We go 3 minus 8, that's negative 5, right? So we'll, let's just go 3 minus 8, okay? In other words, we've got a 4 on top, right? And we've got a negative 5 on the bottom. Well, you know, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, so that's where we get that, okay? And in fact, we could even go backwards if you wanted to. You could go 2 minus 6 if you wanted. How about this? 2 minus 6, boom. Since we did a 2 minus 6, we could also do 8 minus 3, right? Well, 2 minus 6 is negative 4. 8 minus 3 is 5. A negative divided by a positive is also a negative. It's the same thing. So there is your formula. That's how you derive the formula of the slope. In other words, if you have two gigantic numbers, you, want to, you don't want to sit there and count off, for heaven's sakes. You can just subtract the y's, stick it on top. And then subtract the x's, stick it on the bottom. There's your slope. All right? So we can use that. Let's actually go ahead and find this here. All right? Uh, find the slope of the line that passes through the points... And, okay, so we don't even have to go, oh, we're going to draw the graph now and count off. No. Here's the actual formula. You might want to write this down. This is the slope formula. This is what they call it. The difference of the y's, they will all, all often say, over or divided by the difference of the x's. And those little twos, you would just read that. y sub 1 minus y sub 2 over x sub 1 minus x sub 2. So, and again, we proved a second ago, it doesn't matter which y you start with, as long as you're consistent. In other words, let's go, this is, the one, this is a y, and that's another y, and here's an x, and here's a, you know, and so on, okay? So let's just say we went, okay, I'm going to start with the first y. So I have a 4, that's the first y, minus the second y. Well, if I minus a negative 2, that's the same thing as plus 2, all right? Boom, I got it. Okay, since we started at the front, with this, with this 4, we're going to start at the front with the same, you know, part of that same point. So we have negative 3 here, then minus 5. Okay? So we have 6, and we have negative 8, right? And we can, you know, reduce that, of course, to uh, negative 3 fourths, right? Because a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So negative 3 fourths is our answer, all right? Now let's just prove it doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay? So we can actually go... Somebody else might say, oh, I took the negative 2. I started with that one. Okay, fine. All right. So you start with your negative 2, and you subtract the other y, right? The one y minus the other y. So negative 2 minus that y. That would be negative 4. Okay? And since we started with negative 2, at the, at the bottom, we'll start subtracting with the 5. Okay? So we start with a 5, and 5 minus negative 3 is the same thing as 5 plus 3, right? So over here, we have negative 6 over positive 8. Well, of course, that reduces to also 3 fourths, and a negative divided by a positive is also a negative. So we get the exact same thing. That's how you find slope. Subtract the y's, plop it over, subtracting the x's, reduce it if you need to, boom, you're done. Okay? So you don't have to graph points anymore and count from one to the other. You're, that's all you need to do. Okay? So let's find another one. Well, we just did that one. <laughs> okay, so we did the exact same thing. All right, so on your, uh, in your practice problems, go ahead and try practice problem A. Okay, well, A is going to be 2 times the square root of 17. Now, what you might have got is this. You got the square root of 68, 
ok if you get an even number especially or if you get a number that you know has factors like you know sixty three seven times nine go and try to break it down in a factor tree you might got something like this sixty eight is well it's two of course you know that and then there's thirty four you go oh there's another two two times uh... seventeen you went oh it actually goes to this two times two times seventeen this comes out like that and then two times square root of seventeen Boom. all right go ahead and try b a b will be negative one all right negative one is your slope try c now okay c is nineteen over eighteen all right no matter what way you do it you should get nineteen divided by eighteen that is your final answer okay all right that's it for today. See you guys next time.